In this video, I will be talking about my Mega Excadrill that I've been using and I will also be showing you guys how do I use this Pokemon, like adapting to multiple situations, held items, moves, teams, etc. Now before we start, I have a special request. The developers of the game have contacted me about the situation that happened with one of the fans of the game. Apparently, they have been contacted by some players about a bedridden person that has been battling leukemia since October. This player goes by the name of Disappointment Gloom and plays on the server 62 and today it's his birthday. So please, I want to ask everyone who is watching the video, use the comment section and wish a happy birthday to this player. Or even if you know him in game, go ahead and tell him happy birthday today. And of course, together with that, send them the best wishes and using the words that the developers have told me, leukemia is not the death sentence any longer. Many advantages in treatment and drug therapy can help the patient live a relatively normal life for many years. We would really love that all of our users could help and cheer him up to fight against this disease. And once again, I really appreciate everyone who will join the comments section and wish him a happy birthday and wish him the best. Now let's talk about Mega Excadrill. Mega Excadrill is an S tier Pokemon that you can catch on the Safari. Of course, you catch it as an Excadrill or Drillbur, you evolve it and you can Mega Evolve it and make it shiny. Now, the shiny Mega Excadrill has an amazing 175 attack and 118 speed. That's what we want to focus on. What's so special about this Pokemon and the way that I play it is that everything that I do on this Pokemon, I focus on attack only. I don't care so much about the speed because he already has the ability Sandrush and what Sandrush does is if this Pokemon is on a sandstorm it will double the speed of this Pokemon in battle. So I would say that's the game plan. We want as much damage as we can because for example look at my maxed out Mega Ash Greninja even though he is also focused on special attack he has 18k almost 19k speed. Even though like the meta Pokemon, the big Pokemon usually have like 20 something K speed, if you have something like this that will double the speed in battle, it will be hard for your enemy to actually outspeed you. So because you will mostly outspeed any enemy that you will find, you want as much damage sources as possible. So for nature, we usually want adamant. Adamant will give us plus attack and minus special attack. For held item, you want something offensive. I'm using the most offensive possible right now, which is life orb. Gives me 30% more power on my attacks, but well, uh, it removes me some HP in battle. If you don't like losing HP, you can also use Adaptive Arrow, which will give you 20% more boost on your moves that are the same type as your Pokemon. In other words, it will boost your ground type and steel type moves. There's also another strategy that I can talk about in a little bit, which would be playing with Focus Sash, so that you can make sure that during your battle, you can just use a sword stance, which makes sense because if you have a focus sash, you will always survive with one HP. And that's amazing because you can just use the sand rush ability that you have. You are faster than the enemy and you have one free turn to use sword stance. This way you will just double your attack. And the enemy usually cannot kill you because you will be 1 HP and 1 HP with a ton of speed, you will basically just sweep the whole entire team. This Pokemon right now, it's maxed out according to level 72. So it was before the update, I maxed out this Pokemon and I never upgraded it again besides a little bit of the star up. If we go over here on the hyper training, as you can see, speed and physical attack, I go to friendship while I focus more on having the physical attack. I go to the runes, if we go over here, of course I don't have the perfect runes yet, but as you can understand, I'm trying to focus the most that I can on attack. Everything that gives me attack, as you can see, I'm trying to get the most that I can. This one gives attack and a little bit of speed. This one actually gives a speed, but I would probably replace it with something more offensive. Just attack, like straight up raw damage. If we take a look at my IVs, this was a bred Pokemon, so I did bring read this Pokemon to get like the perfect IVs before I start powering it up. And then we go over here to the EVs. As you can understand, zero speed because uh, technically I'm already investing in other Pokemons and full... <laughs> oh, dude, this is honestly has way too much attack. <laughs> uh, okay, it's full attack. 
Okay, th that's what I'm going for. Related to moves, we are going for Swords Dance, Earthquake, and Iron Head. Those are like the mandatory moves. But if you don't have Iron Head, you can use Metal Claw, okay? It's just not as good. Or even if you have a Smart Strike laying around like a TM, Iron Head can miss, Smart Strike will not miss. Related to the last move, so we mentioned three mandatory moves. The last one can be, is like according to whatever you need. You can use Rock Slide, for example, which I'm using right now. It's for the raw damage in case it's needed. You can use, for example, Rapid Spin. Uh, it can be useful to remove spikes and Stealth Rock out of the match. Or honestly, you can use Stealth Rock yourself. Uh, maybe there's a situation where you can actually use Stealth Rock and it's more uh, more handy to use Stealth Rock. Or just go around over here and search for a physical move that would suit your Pokemon. Maybe you want X Scissors, which is good against Psychic type, Dark type, and Grass type Pokemon. But hey, I do run this move set is also the cheapest one and I like to be full offensive. Oh yeah, there's also the option of you using Sandstorm on this Pokemon itself, but it's not like the most advisable thing because you usually want a Pokemon that helps you with a Sandstorm. So we are looking for a Pokemon with the ability Sandstream. Myself, I started using Mega Tyranitar as a lead Pokemon. It's honestly a very good Pokemon. It it can be a very good strategy. But since like we got an update and we got like higher levels and higher powers, I had to stop investing on Tyranitar for now. But my main like my main basic logic, I was not running with a red card. I was most likely going to use one of those smooth rocks trying to get an orange one and smooth rock just increases the amount of turns that the sandstorm exists and not just that the the shiny mega tyranitar if we go over here also has 174 attack and 160 defense of course uh, his typing he's horrible against fighting types but the defense can be very good against uh, like a lot of other things and not just that the thing would be that according to our moves take a look at this we have stone edge crunch earthquake and stealth rock earthquake uh would be situational crunch and stone edge would be the mandatory ones using stone edge instead of rock slide i know it's 80 accuracy it's kind of risky but it also has a high chance to crit and the the main thing is that if i would use tyranitar and using it as a lead pokemon using as a pokemon that is also powered up it can be scary right now it's not scary at all <laughs> right now it's not scary at all because i had to stop investing on it but it can also be scary you don't want to leave this pokemon over there like alive you don't want it to do anything you can set up one stealth rock for example, so that will help you against sturdy Pokemon that just come in the battle. If a Pokemon that has sturdy, imagine like those annoying fortresses, those annoying like players that use Focus Sash on Wobbuffet, Focus Sash End of War on the birds, on the Rattatas, the Stealth Rock is a good counter to that. Honestly, most of the Pokemon with just a Sandstorm also, uh, well, they get, the kit, they get countered naturally by the Sandstorm. But the thing is that sometimes people imagine that you put this Pokemon like and you just use it to summon Sandstorm and the enemy does not kill it. Enemy could be like, oh, look at that. That's cool. I can just use Swords Dance or whatever and boost my Pokemon while this guy is over there. <laughs> and then you'd be like, oh, no, what do I do now? And that's why the Tyranitar existed in the first place in my team, because he wants to be a threat. He does not want the enemy to just be there and sword dance in front of your face. He wants to be like, oh, okay, you are swords dancing? I will just stone edge on your face so that you can take some damage. So that would be the main, like, the main logics be, uh, behind me using Tyranitar. Now let's give you an in battle example over here. So for example, what we sometimes want to do, imagine like this Mimikyu is actually going to attack me. I can use, for example, he pow down as a sacrifice because I was talking about Sandstream, right? I was talking about like having a Pokemon that has Sandstream and can just summon the Sandstorm. And as you can see, that he pow down was actually using a red card, which forces the enemy to switch their Pokemon. And because he killed my he pow down, it's a free switch to me. I am not losing a turn to switch in a Pokemon and I can just come over here and from this moment I can just for example Iron Head and uh, like 
from this moment you're already faster than the enemy. Of course, if you find the opportunity that you think like, oh, the enemy will not kill me, you can just use one sword sense. And if the enemy just gives you like the slight advantage, if they give you like one chance to give you one sword sense, trust me, the battle is most likely over. Because after one sword stance, <laughs> you will just kill everything that they let you kill. Of course, right now, I am uh, fighting against like um, a weaker opponent in terms of like the enemy Pokemon that I'm facing. But I will give you an example in a little bit of what can you do against a stronger opponent. Oh, and by the way, as you noticed, the Sandstorm is already out. And because of the Sandstorm uh, being already out is why I suggest a Smooth Rock. Now the Smooth Rock or Smooth Stone is with Tyranitar. And what happens over here with Tyranitar is that he summons that, right? And like, usually the goal is that you kinda sacrifice Tyranitar and the Smooth Rock will just make the Sandstorm last for eight rounds. So you have a lot of space to just move around your Pokemon. Over there, I could have just used uh, Stealth Rock, but I decided to switch in because Mr. Ivaltal is not the most scary thing against my Excadrill. I guess he can do a little bit of damage. <laughs> he can. I'm using a Life Orb, okay? I'm going to lose 1.5k HP every time I move. That's why it can be dangerous to use a Life Orb sometimes. Even over here against this Greninja, Greninja uh, is faster than my Excadrill, but because there's a Sandstorm going on and I already used one Swords Dance, like there's no way he survives and there's no way he moves first. So that's the, the solid thing. You can just rip off... Uh, oh, and Zerara. Zerara is usually like a very fast Pokemon. This one is not leveled up, but you'll get the point. Usually you want to outspeed your Pokemon and out damage them. Now I want to show you something different. A different strategy that I sometimes use that I can use to adapt myself to the enemies and make sure that I can just rush down and do whatever I want. And this strategy will be about this. I honestly cannot believe that I, I, I ran out of berries and <laughs> I did not notice it. And before we go into battle, what is our game plan? Our game plan is that using Focus Sash so that we can survive one attack. With that attack, with that round that we are going to sacrifice, we are going to use one time Sword Dance. And then there's like two options that you might want to go for. You might want a Lychee Berry that will give you even more attack. So you might not need a speed. Or for example, you can even use use a Salic Berry, which increases your speed once your HP is lower than one fourth. So technically, it is a risky play, yes, but it can be worth it. So we have, okay, it's a Feromosa matchup, you know what I'll do? I will actually do and try to change to Tyranitar. By the way, I'm leading with Feromosa because I was a little bit lazy to switch the Pokemon, and you guys know this is slow. And okay, this is a good start in a way. <laughs> this is a very good start because I can show you guys exactly what I mean. So Feromosa one shot my Tyranitar. And because of that, as I told you, Tyranitar is super weak against those fighting moves. Because of that, she's already stacking some attack. So what will I do? I will just use one turn and use Sword Stance. Feromosa cannot kill me. She has taunt. Okay, that was not what I was expecting to have, but should be fine because from now on, <laughs> after one sword dance, it should be fine. Even though now I have a fortress, please don't pain split on me. Oh no. Okay, okay. <laughs> we have a player. Okay, Fortress was holding a red card, which is a common thing to use nowadays. Uh, and it's a good counter to Excadrill. Since you want to use Swords Dance on Excadrill, if you have the chance, this can be like a very good counter. It's like enemy uses a red card. Excadrill is forced to switch out, so he loses the Swords Dance that he was using. But then again, uh, the match was already over anyways. Since there's like no big thing going on, yeah, besides this Ninja Toad, which would already also be outsped and Excadrill would defeat it anyways. 
We are going against a stronger opponent now, and I'm going to try and use the same strategy. Okay, I'm going to change into Tyranitar. He's going to eat one of those. Now, uh, Greninja is an offensive Pokemon, I don't want to switch out. I want to try and do one Stealth Rock. He actually uses Ice Beam because it's on auto, that's fine. Now I try to Stone Edge, but he uses Grass Knot, and I'm kinda dead. I already used like two or three of my rounds of um, Sandstorm, I have like around five. Now with those five, I plan to kill like four or five Pokemon with Excadrill. So I'm just going to set up Swords Dance and be like this. He will Dark Pulse me. And as you can see, um, <laughs> honestly, he should be stronger. So uh, this uh, Angry Mole is kind of maxed out. This Pokemon only has... It should be a little bit stronger. Or if it was a player actually playing it, it would use like a water type move. And it would go like to 1 HP. That would be the plan. Now that, well, I'm not 1 HP, I need to just Sword Stance. Uh, I mean, not Sword Stance. I need to Earthquake my way out. And oh boy... <laughs> Oh boy, another Excadrill decided to show up. It is completely fine. In this situation, since we, like, I was, um, uh, like, I was confident that I was faster than my enemy. In that situation, I decided not to switch out. But in this situation right now, this is the specific situation that I was talking about. If this would be a PvP, this player would be like, okay, he has plus two attack, he cannot attack me with the Iron Head, otherwise my Xerneas will die. So what, what do I usually do? Also, of course, it depends on how many times you play the guest end player, you also have to do some mind games. What do I usually do is that I switch to another of those. <laughs> I switch to another of those like uh, Sandstorm Pokemon and this one um, you know what he wasted one turn with another Geomancy so I'm going to do like this since he has to charge it, uh, the Geomancy again all good and now I change it back <laughs> let's go to G wait he's asleep wait the, uh, does not have a berry to wake him up I mean sure so I, I changed to Heap on again. For those who are confused, what the heck, why, why am I doing that? It's mostly <laughs> because Heap on will reset the freaking Sandstorm. And I'm just waiting for the, po like, the enemy to attack me like that. There we go. Now, I have the red card. And because of the red card, as you can see, he was forced to switch out. And now we are able to just switch back in our Pokemon. Since it's a weaker Pokemon, we might be able to just use like this one Sword Dance. Let's hope he doesn't do anything too aggressive to, to us. No, it's a weaker Pokemon. So it's like a free attack. It's a free turn that you have. You just like, you just do that. Okay, one Sword Dance. And from this moment, now you are faster than Xerneas. Now you have damage, and now Xerneas will die. So that's usually how you want to play. You want to play around your Sandstorm, if you are doing that. And remember, he had an Excadrill, so like there's a Paladon as well. So he's also using a similar strategy to this. And you want to play around your buffs, around to whenever you can switch in your Pokemon. And dude, he's using exactly the same thing. Come on, man. <laughs> I mean, from the moment I show this on the video and from from the moment a lot of players have been playing against me and suffering with my Excadrill, I guess like there's a lot of people who have been enjoying and playing with Excadrill. This is the video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a big like on the video and subscribe for more. And as always, I'll see you on the next video.